Today, I'm going on a sartorial journey with one of the original 80s supermodels, Yasmin Le Bon. <laughs> Yasmin grew up in Oxford and began modelling once she left school. She was one of the highest earning models during the 1980s and appeared on the covers of over 300 magazines from across the globe, including the first issues of British and American Elle. Her modelling career spans five decades and she and her oldest daughter, Amber, are the mother and daughter faces of Boodle's jewellery. Yasmin married Duran Duran frontman Simon Le Bon in 1985 and the couple have three daughters, Amber, Saffron and Tallulah. Hello and Hello. welcome, <laughs> Yazzie. I'm shocked by some of that, actually. The three, what, the 300 the three, covers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, but you know there are a lot of bridal catalogues. I'm sure they're thrown in there at the same time. Do you do you have a favourite cover? <laughs> mm, not really. I, I I'm I really don't like myself as a cover girl. Never did. Why? I was, I stop found, it. Found it a bit tricky. Why? I felt like people needed to work a bit harder. Oh, stop On it. my behalf. But yeah, I think there was probably one or two L covers in there. French L that I thought were okay, passable. You and know. and were you leaping in the air? Because I always think of you as the original <laughs> athletic supermodel. I did, I super did a lot of leaping. I mean, my generation was all about balletic leaps and people knew that that was something I could do having studied ballet and they just would make me kind of leap. I'd be boing, boing, boing from one side to the other, doing ridiculous leaps in stiletto heels on concrete all day long. Are you, is your body now paying the price? Knackered, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't actually put my own knickers on in the morning. Oh, it's just, I've learned how to lasso things really, really well. <laughs> yeah, it's shocking. I'll never forget meeting you for the first time. It was probably 1993. It was my very first London Fashion, <laughs> London Fashion Week um, catwalk show. It was a tiny little salon show yep. in my shop. Yeah. All of you were barefoot, and yeah. I remember <laughs> feeling quite nervous about meeting you because you were such a superstar, and you were just so kind. You were nervous. Oh, though. my God, I was <laughs> shitting myself. It yeah. was just you but, were... But, you know, I mean, of course you were. It was a really big deal. I mean, by that time, I was blasé about it, but the, but it was, so, it was so refreshing to actually see somebody who it meant so much to you well you and you were so nervous <laughs> and it, you were so lovely and it was a beautiful show <laughs> you were so kind and so encouraging it was a beautiful it was show, a beautiful it? show it yeah. was just I don't know oh, I yeah. think the collection also worked so well with the interior of the shop that the whole yeah it was a very you, you girls just shone gorgeous yeah. it was it was it was beautiful but the modeling world has changed so much since then hasn't it mm. do you think that's a good thing do you know, it's it's terrible, isn't it? I have to watch myself as as you look back, you always think, oh well, it's all lovely back in well back in my day, you know. And um, I'm I'm very happy to have been working at that time. I think I possi we possibly may have had the best of it. It's changed a lot. Um, some things maybe for the better. Yeah, I think there are maybe some spot spotlights on things that needed to change. Um, I'm so happy about. The fact there's so much more inclusivity and diversity in every way. It's something I'd been championing my whole life. And that's great. I just wonder whether people can switch off. You know, the great thing I had was I would go to work. I did my job to the best of my ability. Made every, It was all about the team and having a great time enjoying it. But then when I left, I left. I left work at work. I didn't have to worry about every two seconds looking and thinking about creating this other brand image, marketing myself, you know, constantly on Instagram. Everything could be, an inst you know, a photographic moment. That must be exhausting. Because like, it, truly exhausting. Correct me if I'm wrong, but don't models also now um, uh, get judged on their followers oh, in terms oh, of numbers. You, you, listen, m m the really good good models now are just marketing geniuses. I mean, they're basically doing some, at least three other people's job, you know, which which 
you know, don't get me on it. I get like, I, I feel like there's, unfortunately, I feel like there's a lot of exploitation going on right now. Nobody wants to talk about that. Um, In what way? Which is a shame because in my generation, we all clubbed together. We were, we were all friends. It was quite a small industry. And we had decided to do the thing that every agent says you shouldn't do. You're like, you know, oh, you know, never, never talk about, never talk about fees with the other girls, you know, wink, wink. Well, of course, that's the first thing we did, you know. <laughs> To hell with that. And, and we got together and we clubbed together. We decided what, what, was, what was a fair fee. And I would turn around and look at someone else and go, no, you know, you're a little bit more than me. We wanted to change the fee structure for everybody, not just us. You know, it wasn't fair. It wasn't right. There was a degree of exploitation. And when we did, we were, like, we were like a union. We changed it for the better. Now I feel like there's a lot of exploitation going on. There are so many people in the business wanting a little, a little chunk of it. There isn't enough to go around. There aren't any more jobs. There are a lot more people. And because of that, a lot more young people who can't stand up for themselves. I think they're, it's very difficult for the agents as well. It's, it's, a change, it's a change landscape. I don't think there's as much fun in it, I have to say. I, yes, it does feel very changed. And it almost feels like um, influencers are treading on the toes of potential modelling jobs. One hundred. I'm not saying yeah. they are models yeah. or do no. a job. I think they. Like. I think they do this different thing. I mean, I believe in a world where there should be room for everybody. You know, I've always said for with designers, I always used to say when when somebody sort of rips you off or does something that's similar to you, I always, say, I always used to say to people, "Well, that's just fabulous. That just that's just somebody making the market even bigger." You know, really, there's just room for everybody. I always think that, but I think they do very different different things completely yeah but they must eat into some of the modeling market yeah they definitely do because i mean you know that people's budgets are people's budgets aren't they so if they're spreading those thin everywhere they and that's essentially what's happened they're spreading them thin everywhere which means that there's you know there's come there's going to come a point quite soon where you won't you'll get very few models because you know it's expensive you know, you're traveling, you're living away from home, you're living in capital cities. Who's paying for that? You. And if you can't afford it because you, there are only so many jobs to go around. And this is essentially what's happening right now. So it's kind of, it's a shame because, you know, I used to moan about actresses taking models, jobs, for God's sake. You know, you know you stick to your own, stick to your own line of work. But, um, but now it's, there's so many. And it's a shame because a model does a very different thing. Completely. You hardly ever hear from it. What I love, she says on a podcast with Amanda Wakely. No, but <laughs> you hardly ever, and you should hardly ever hear from a model because you, you want to live vicariously through them. They're telling a story. It's not reality. You know, you go, you do an editorial job and you're setting a scene. It's make-believe. It's, it's a story, in, you know, in pictures. And it's something you can't do with an actress. You know, you've heard them. You've heard them play play roles in films it's a very very and, different level of imagination almost, that you have to use yeah you almost pigeonhole them as those personalities yeah, yeah. whereas a model you see in each story di differently every time and you start you start seeing yourself in there I think it's it's just a very different very subtle way of storytelling but but quite fascinating I have to say I'm loving seeing more representation of our generation she says very <laughs> broadly, <laughs> forgive me. Yeah. What What are your ah. views on that? Listen, I'm really happy about it. <laughs> Let it roll on. <laughs> I mean, I, I was always the oldest, you know, I just kept plugging away at it. And, you know, when I first started, people, were, you know, you didn't think you would model past 25. Oh, I, that I was mean, it. it. There was an era, surely, where you were encouraged not to talk about being over 20. Yeah, well, un unfortunately, I was always one of those people where in the press, they just print my name and my age straight away. So I could never even lie about it. I mean, when I first started doing shows, there were girls there who used to constantly call themselves 30, you know, for, for like a good <laughs> decade. And I just used to laugh and go, mm -hmm, yeah. But now, <laughs> but now, thanks, Iris Apfel. But oh, age yes. is a celebration, isn't it? Well, it is, isn't it? So it should be as yeah. well, you know, but all, all the stories. I mean, I used to love working with girls from different parts of the world, girls, you know, who would, different ages. I was lucky enough, part why I loved Azadine's show was Azadine just used to bring together this 
collection, this group of wonderful women, all ages, from all over, who had... We used to have the best time. We used to have to tell stories, jokes. I mean, I learned so much from them. It struck me that in those gorgeous Lindbergh-type images of... Well, the Lindbergh images, I should say, of many girls together, just you were all having the best time and you looked like great friends. We used to we used to get together during the shows. We used to have great fun. We used to work so hard. I mean, we would be, sort of be dropping and, and we would have to pick each other up. But if there was a spare moment, you know, one of us would grab a car. It's like, right, we're off. We're going to the underwear shop in Paris. And, you know, we would all go charging around everywhere and in and out of each other's bedrooms and, you know, holding hands during shows and do, doing crazy things. But it, it felt, we felt like a team together. We were holding each other up, actually. I remember we used to call each other and go, are you doing Milan this season? And go, you know, because Christy said she's not doing Milan this season. And, you know, Cindy said she's not. But are you going to come? And she'd be like, mm, yeah. If there were at least three of us there, Love it's like, it. it's a go. We'll go. I'll go. You know, but we had to have, we had to have the team. Were you part of the, I'm not getting out of bed for less than 10,000 pounds? <laughs> Brigade. Oh, yeah. oh, God bless her. You know, she just, you know, there was a moment when you when you're just having a, 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 a um, microphone held or you're being interviewed one too many times and you start to forget, you know, who you're talking to and and that it's not in that little rarefied world. <laughs> and it, it came back to bite her in the bum so much oh. because you know as a model 90 percent of the work you do you're not really being paid for because it's because editorial. you're doing editorial work for and you're magazines. doing just you know so you do all of that just for the 10 percent that pays you relatively well so it, it's a t tough old thing you yeah. know no well thanks for putting some perspective yeah, on to that be, to be totally misconstrued by the entire world <laughs> Including me, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. But today we're going on a style journey together. Oh, good, How? because I need a style journey, oh, I tell it. you. My How? style journey has gone, gone just run into a cul-de-sac right now. <laughs> well, I was going to say, how did you decide what you were wearing here oh, today? don't even. I mean, the things I have been <laughs> no, flinging yes, around, pouting. Last night I went out to have dinner with a friend it was a group of women who are the most forgiving. But, of course, that's who you really want to dress for. Could I find anything? No. The, my dressing room looked like I had been burgled. It was shocking. <laughs> I had to apologise to the whole family because I was so grumpy as well. What did you end up wearing? The same thing I've been wearing for the past few months, Amanda. <laughs> You've even seen the outfit. <laughs> In fact, you may have seen it more than once. I'm not sure. Well... Yes. As long as it makes yeah. you feel good is my it's, my it's, motto. Yeah, it's that being being feeling like you're held together, put together, but you're still you. And of course, comfort's a real factor because I, I can't do the Crucial. not comfortable thing now. That's impossible. There are too many squidgy bits that are fighting to get out, you know. So <laughs> they have to be, you know, they have to compensate for them somehow but yeah it's that put together thing it's a really tough thing I think this age I used to think I could just carry on wearing everything forever and I have really tried to do that in moments and I'm not saying I won't go back there again at the moment I'm not feeling quite as confident but I still want that rock and roll edge interesting yeah were you very aware of your parents style growing up yeah, absolutely. Um, I adored my mother. We didn't have the same style at all. She was terribly chic. Uh, I loved my dad's style. Tell but me then about... I've always loved men's clothes. But, but yes, was it his tailoring? Yeah, I, he just always looked super chic. And he was a smart man. I mean, you know, he would put a lovely jacket on, just be, a beautiful double-breasted. There was always a little gold ring, you know. He, he just, he looked, he looked charming. Did you ever discuss style with him <laughs> in later life in later life I did actually say to him you know you know between you and you know a few people you know, yeah Steve McQueen and you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know there are many people but I love I've loved menswear my whole life I've always always worn men's clothes and you know in the old days it was called men's clothes I mean there wasn't really I, I, I you couldn't really get that kind of telling I had to go into a man's shop to get the suit I wanted uh, do you remember your earliest sartorial memory? Do you remember the first time you put something on and you thought, this is transformative? 
I mean, thinking back as a as a as a as a teenager, you know, had no money. Of course, like zero money. So I actually shopped at jumble sales. Yep. So you know, I think the first time I found a pair of winkle pickers, and they were cream satin, perfect winkle pickers in the jumble sale for I think it was fifty p. I was pretty that was pretty steep, you know. And I felt like the bee's knees. I wonder if they'd been bridal shoes. They absolutely 100% could have. I I then proceeded to, within two weekends, knacker them. So I then had to sort of dye them black. But perfect. And then they became black winkle pickers, which was even better. Back in the day, (laughs) you could get all those fabulous um, satin shoe dyes and all the rest of it. God knows what I used. Honestly, Amanda, it could have just been a Sharpie pen. Well. And quite likely to have been a felt tip pen, I'll be honest. Did the same job. we, We were really, really poor back then. You know, nobody had any money and nobody ever wore new clothes. But that, that fosters just didn't happen. creativity. We had to. Yeah. We had to. We'd go to the jumble sale and we'd buy a bin bag full of clothes, run back home, and then there'd be a lot of work with, with, with safety pins and a little bit of sewing and cutting and, and then you'd go out in them that night. And then next weekend you'd take it all back again. Yeah. <laughs> And buy a whole new bag. Whole new I mean, bag. it was proper circularity yeah. and fashion, oh, yeah. wasn't oh, yeah. it? Yeah, you just had to be careful of the old age pensioners. So those, some of those women were brutal, sharp elbows. Oh, sharp elbows. <laughs> oh, yeah, you did. You didn't mess with them. Did you wear a school uniform? <laughs> of sorts, <laughs> she says. <laughs> <laughs> you customised it. Yeah, do you know it wasn't. It wasn't a really super strict uniform. I just don't think they could have done that to anybody. Did you roll the top of your skirt over? Yeah, not too much. You know, I tended to like the big baggy things or or skinny, skinny drainpipe jeans and, you know, big, you know, daddy's jumpers and things like that. I wore a lot of my father's jumpers, actually. I mean, I always think of you as someone who is passionate about design. You really appreciate the tiny details, the cut, the crafting. What ignited that passion in you? Always fascinated if you've got the eye, you've got the eye. But then my father was a photographer. You know, he taught photography. And maybe from such a young age, you start seeing those those things. I was surrounded by books on photography. And I had I inherited his passion for cars. Adored cars, adored great design, really. And that just transcended into everything that you know, you you look at and you appreciate, you can see, even if you don't like, I can appreciate the craft. Mm. And I'm, obs- I, I, to this day, I'm, I, I'm sort of bewildered and excited and inspired all at the same time by, by watching people who can create things and, and seeing and understanding what goes behind something. I find that deeply, deeply fascinating. I think that's what humanity means to me, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, you must have had some extraordinary experiences up close with designers. God, that sounds wrong, but you know what I'm saying. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And yeah. I mean, the first one that really well, yeah, That's springs... going to keep happening, isn't it, now? So, yes, I have had some really up close and personal. Yes. Oh. Yeah. But the first but one absolutely. that really springs to mind is Azadine. Yeah. Because yeah. he loved to work on a woman's body. He didn't did. He? he couldn't draw at all. He could could not draw. He 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 didn't do things in the same way. I'd never met anybody like that. So he was a fabulous. He could cut fabulously, and and had had so much experience cutting. I mean, he could do the whole shebang apart from the sitting down and and drawing and having that kind of concept. So everything had to be done on a body. I mean, those poor girls. They would be up all night. He would be up all night, and he would, yeah. you know, he'd go and poke Naomi in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Because he was inspired and that was it and she'd have me standing there, you know. Um, but but he was amazing to work with. He was and a sculptor, wasn't he? He was a sculptor and he absolutely did everything his own way. He 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 had he was he was quite belligerent about things, super stubborn, you know, when he he decided he just wasn't ready to show at the same time as everyone else, and why should he? He felt different. That was it. He 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 was off 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 season all the time. But how visionary when you now see what a mess, quite frankly, yeah, the industry is in, Absolutely. and how designers are getting burnt out, burnt out yeah. by the pressure of yeah, delivering for this, that, oh. and the other, which is 
Which is senseless. It is. I mean, the idea, if I hear somebody saying newness again and again, I just want to slap them because it's just not how the world works. It's not sustainable. It's not sustainable for the, for the world. It's not sustainable for people. I've seen so many deeply talented young people get so burnt out. And for what? Yeah. And for what? Piles of stuff that nobody can sell anymore? I just, it's, it's sort of distasteful. And then, as Adin was visionary, because he really was, well, when I'm ready to put out, I'm ready to put out. And, yeah. And it really was just and it, it felt, twice a year. It, it felt so sort of jarring at the time. But now you look at it and you think, God, you were so right. Yeah. Just, but, you know, guns. be a true creative. Mm. And do it when you're ready, yeah. not when, you know, not jumping to somebody else's. But I suppose court. also his collection had such a timeless quality oh, yeah. about it, yeah. which, I mean, we were talking about timeless, it the other day, weren't we? Timeless, seasonless. I mean, my, you know. I've got things in my in my in my trunk. Well, I'm going to bring them for you. I've got to open those trunks now because you know you'll look cracking in them, and they're not getting the the wear that they should. But they they're perfect right now. Yeah, absolutely perfect. I, I mean, the things that of Azadines that I owned in the '80s before I even started my own collection. That I don't know where they are now, but I probably sold them because I needed to. Hey, um, we've all been there, we've darling. All been we've there. all been there. But I now look no at it and I think, oh, where's my Azadine denim jacket that was just a forever piece? Yeah. I hope someone out there is still, someone will be enjoying still wearing it. it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you are famously the wife of a rock star. <laughs> Simon Le Bon. Um, do you remember what you wore for his for your first date? Oh with God, him? absolutely. And Ooh, then there's photographs it? because it was a it wasn't actually a blind date. We did actually know what each other looked like, but we hadn't met before until that night when we went to um, the world premiere of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Oh God, just so a low I, key I first mean, really blind date. Key, and I didn't really know what I was letting myself in for, and that. He really was in the biggest band in the world at that point. And uh, luckily, luckily, I had sort of maybe a week before that thought, or well, maybe even my flatmate had said, well, what, what are you going to wear? And I sort of thought, mm, gosh, shit, you know. Um, and luckily had just been working, wearing a dress by these sisters, Amy and Grace Lee, and yes. got hold of them. And went over to their apartments to, to try and find something to wear. They were so desperately sweet. And they and they sort of kitted me out. So I bought this dress, um, velvet dress, with a sort of, it was all corseted at the, there. At the, in oh, the, my God, in I the remember middle. pictures of this. And, and it had a little organza ruffle around just off the shoulder. And black velvet. And the shoes I got from F. Pinay. Used to be on Bond Street, absolutely. if you remember. In that legendary store. I Beautiful think it's a listed store. building. Yes, it, it is. Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous, jewel like. And so had the outfit. And it's actually very funny. A friend of mine had a 50th birthday uh, a while back. And uh, one of the years, each night was a 64, 74, 84. And of course, the 84, I brought, I brought the outfit and I wore the same outfit. <laughs> Of course, it's been altered. People are like, oh, you can still get into that? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> Rubbish. It's got a whole, it's got a whole two new panels in it. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, good for you. Yeah. But, you know, that, that, that was a uh, thank God for that, for that little kind of somebody asking me what I was going to wear, because otherwise I would have been there in, you know, Catherine Hamlet utility wear. Not that there's anything wrong with that, of course. Not at all. I used to love my Hamnet oh, utility yeah. wear. Yeah, all that parachute. I wish silk. I still had that. Yeah, I still got some pieces. I Actually, am I'll be, so I'll be honest. To they're raid. Simons. They're Simons. Yeah. Well, yeah. be warned, Simon. I yeah. am coming to raid. Yes, <laughs> his little archive, big archive. Um, how do you choose what to wear to his gigs? Hmm. Good point. I have to be, I, I feel like I have to try a bit harder these days. I used to be very blasé because, you know, going on the road, you know, you want to be comfortable and they're late and you're running straight off the gig into a bus, onto a plane. It's not, it's not glamorous. And, you know. It's like the fashion world. You know, venues aren't glamorous and people are there to have a good time, to enjoy themselves. And yes, they do dress up or not. So I totally other people you know, dress up a bit, make it a bit special. So I kind of feel like I, I have to make a little bit of an effort now, which is, <laughs> you know, you're talking to me. I mean, I walk around, you know, wet hair and no makeup and just looking really rubbish. So I've started putting a, just putting a few looks together. So what's Rock Chick Yasmin like? 
I don't know, you know, you can't go wrong with a slip dress. That can always be rock and roll. Jackets are... I need more jackets in my life, The basically. key, aren't they? Are they really are... They're everything to me. You know, apart from anything, they've got great pockets. And I do love a jacket that's got at least three pockets. Because I'm, trying, yeah, I'm getting funny about having to carry bags and rubbish Don't like you that. Love the internal, internal pockets. Pocket. Love On a man's that. jacket. Yeah, oh, exactly. Love that. Love that. And it's just, you feel pulled together. No matter what's on underneath, great pair of shoes, great jacket. I'm, I'm done. You've described your wedding uh, to Simon as ramshackle. <laughs> it was completely <laughs> and utterly chaotic. <laughs> And all I can say is I keep telling the the same story to many young people and my daughters simply as a cautionary tale. And I'm not 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 the getting married bit, but you know, we got we got the quickest license you could possibly get. I mean, in retrospect, it was the smartest thing to do because that, you know, it would have been a complete nightmare paparazzi wise. So so nobody knew that we were getting married. And it was two days after Christmas Day in Oxford. We had didn't have a home. We didn't have a hotel book. It was my hometown. But, you know, my poor parents, I ended up kicking them out of their own, their own house that night to go and stay with my sister. We had nothing booked, nothing sorted out. And the night before we're getting married, everyone turns around and says, well, what are you going to wear tomorrow? And, and I turn around and think, and I turn around and go, well, I'll just wear one of my little black hazardine dresses, you know. Because all I had was a pair of old Levi's, some mangy T-shirts, a couple of black hazardine dresses, that was it, and a suitcase full of books. Nothing else. We didn't have anything. And everyone turned around and looked in horror, including Simon. Like, do you, what, what are you talking about? You can't get married in black. You know, of course I can. I'm marrying into rock and roll. I mean, we're getting married in a registry office, for God's sake. Oh, no, no, no. You know, and the horror. I couldn't sleep all night because I, I didn't have anything. So that morning... Literally nine o'clock in the morning, my father drives me into Oxford, the only shop that's open. And by this stage, we're already cutting it fine. <laughs> I run into Benetton. Benetton. Yep, you heard that right. And run in there, complete mess, going, for God's sake, you've got to give me something. As long as it's not black, grey or denim, I've got to get married in it this morning. And they handed me this sort of fluffy fawn and cream sweater dress. And I got married in that. And it was uh, a tough look. And all I know is he must have really loved me to marry me in that. <laughs> Did you ever wear it again? Oh, my word, no. Oh, my goodness. And, I mean, luckily there are only a couple of pictures of me on my wedding day. But, and I've shown my daughters and I, I've always said to them, just give me a week, just one week. That's all I need, just one week. <laughs> if you were to do it all over again, what would you wear now? Oh my God, that's a tr that's a toughie. <gasps> well, well, you know, I don't. You know, it's a really weird thing, isn't it? I mean, I I always joke about the, the bleeding wedding, you know, and the, <laughs> uh, you know the complete and utter chaos that ensued. You know, I forgot to invite my own grandmother. Can you imagine? She lived in Oxford. <sighs> yeah, yeah. I mean, people were just people would t anyone Simon was talking to that morning or the night before. She, he was inviting, so it was random, <laughs> completely random. What would I wear now? Um. You know, if I could have, I would go for the big shebang. I think I'd just go for the biggest, frothiest thing I possibly, you know, the most un unnecessary kind of gown. Forget that, oh, no, you'll wear that again, rubbish. <laughs> because, you know, I wore a Benetton dress and never wore that again. <laughs> <laughs> now, I have to ask you this. As the mother of three daughters, the mother of the bride conundrum, stylistically. Oh, yeah, that's a tough one. Um, and I always think... That must be probably one of the trickiest dresses to choose as a woman, as a mother. You've got to feel like you. And yeah. I think that that's the real problem. That's the tough one is that you're not going to stick something on that you wouldn't normally wear or feel comfortable in. Well, I think that's really sage advice. How would you want someone to describe your style, your style DNA in three words? What I'd really like them to do is lie. And, um, Stop it. Stop and, it. Yeah, You're one of the most stylish women in the world. Come just, on. Just call me, I don't know, just she has innate style. 
that would be wonderful. That would be a complete lie, of course. But that that is yeah. so true. Yeah. No, because it's so. Do you know it's random? It's random. You know. You know how some days you can just think, oh "My God, I just don't know how I've pulled this together." It's amazing. I, I I really truly am shocked, amazed, and and really happy. And then other days, you just there is nothing on this earth that can pull it together. Well, it's a shocker, really. Can I just say I've never witnessed one of those days. You're just I'm, kind. No, 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 no. You're I'm just not. a kind You're, person. You no, know, no, no, no. You are one of those women that consistently nails it. And I just, so I just think people are really nice to me, honey. You know, people are really, really... I feel like there's a lot of forgiveness. Yeah, and see, they're really kind to me. I think because they feel they have to be, I'll be honest. <laughs> She's a bit special. She needs a lot more help than the rest of us. Stop it. Yeah. Innately stylish. What are the other two words? Well, no, the pro the pro I think the problem is you walk a fine. I walk a fine line all the time. <laughs> you know that fine line where you you think you're being really clever and just like flippant, blasé, pulse, throwing it together, and sometimes it really is a bit too blasé and a bit too out there, and no one else has quite got it but you in your own tiny mind. And do you know what? In your yeah. own tiny mind, but that's that doesn't a matter, perfect does place it? to be. Oh, it is. Yeah, I think you know what you, you've you've got to be able to tell your own. It's your own story. That. It's an internal story narrative just for you. It's not for anyone else's pleasure because no one else needs to look into that twisted mind. <laughs> it's not twisted. <laughs> so does your weight or perception of your body affect the choice of what you wear? Oh, my God, it's a nightmare right now. I mean, you know, we promised we wouldn't talk about the hormone thing, but my, I mean, that was a shocker, wasn't it? Suddenly from one day to the next, it felt feeling like someone's just blown me up like a balloon and you know the it that that is quite demoralizing there's no there's no way about it and the weight's gone up and down and up and down mind you I suppose I got used to that early on because I kept having children so it'd keep fluctuating <laughs> up and down and up and down so I sort of got used to having at least three different sizes in my wardrobe and <laughs> which is ridiculous different looks according to your perception yes. of yourself yeah 100 percent. I tell you what I find really difficult and quite upsetting for me is I've always loved being a little bit androgynous. It suited me. It's how I felt. And I found that much harder to deal with um, the more weight I, I, I put on. I find that you Why start to be, that? you start to have all these womanly bits, which, <laughs> <laughs> to be frank, I never, ever had before. You know, I could have been standing... My back could have been to you on my front. You never knew which one you had, you know. It was just where the head was placed. But um, but now I've got, I've got these womanly bits. And uh, I found that a struggle, knowing what to do with them. I mean, t to be fair, I only started wearing a bra probably a decade ago because my daughters really just couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and insisted that I went bra shopping, which I found very quite humiliating. Did they take you? They, yeah. Oh, I love that. No, no, really. It was like, you need to do something about this. And I, I, they were right in the end. They were right. Fundamentally, who do you think you dress for? Do you dress for yourself, Simon, other women? I dress for me. I have always dressed for other women because it's, it's their, you know, to get that kind of affirmation from another woman means a thousand times more than from a man. <laughs> Sounds terrible. It's not, the, it's not that I'm against, you know, the male of the race, but uh, I, I, I know that they can feel what I feel. But do you know. think that was because of your early years in the fashion industry, surrounded by, by women, these glamazons? We, was, we, we did it. We dressed for each other, 100%. And, you know, and sometimes we'd dress down, but then we'd make an effort going to the shows, you know. It was very much the era of that, wasn't it? Yeah. We had fun with it. Yeah. We had fun with it. Yeah. And we used to love dressing up like 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 grandmothers, which is why a lot of my wardrobe is not appropriate anymore, because I'm actually a grandmother. So it's not funny anymore, it's not a joke. It was a joke in my twenties, you know, you get a little old tweed dress and little granny handbags. What what was is your favourite piece that you were gifted by a designer? Because that you were very much the era where you could almost choose your favourite look from the catwalk. Is that not right? Oh, no, I wish it was. I mean, it was for some people. Yeah. Some girls were a lot more clever than me, I have to say. <laughs> I was the silly idiot who'd be sort of like, how, 
Oh, Who used to I... ask rather than oh, just take? Yeah, I mean, I I remember finally learning from one Chanel show when it had been fabulous, and it was in the old days when the Chanel show was actually still quite small, and we just did it on a regular catwalk. And I loved my last look shoes; they were these beautiful perspex platforms, and um, and and I really wanted them, and I could see Linda. Do you know, while everyone's clapping, going, you know, Gilles, Gilles, you know, can I just, can I just take my last shoes? And he's like, yes, of course, darling. And I just, I just followed her and just went, then Gilles, can I have my, my last, my perspex? And he's like, yes, just take them, darling. And, you know, which was hysterical because in those days they used to have all the security guards on the doors just so that none of the clothes would go out. But we, off, off we trotted with them. Yeah, no, some girls were really, really good at it. I really wasn't. I was also, I would never go and claim the clothes I was owed. You know, so many shows I've done just for the clothes. And I and I never went and got them, which was ridiculous. Because you felt? Just because I wasn't in the same town, you know, before I knew it, you know, I was, once I left town, that was it. I was off. I was traveling around the world always on an airplane. So how, how am I going to work it out? And then sometimes, you know, you do some shows the clothes and you know some beaten up old plastic bag would turn up on the door with some grotty samples don't even go there but you know the ones obviously that I really treasure are Azadine's because that's we used to fly ourselves in we used to put ourselves up in hotels because it was off season and we would do show after show after show for him and then he would just he would just open the store and we we would just take whatever we wanted. I mean, that, which meant that all we wore was azadine. Yeah, it was. So we were like it was a walking double, advert yeah, all over the yeah, world. Yeah, it was fabulous. So I think those are my. They they will always yeah. be my favourite pieces. Do you think you've got a style icon? But that changes. You know, a lot of my style icon, icons are real people. Yeah, people who I know. They're not. They're not uh, famous people, and they're, they're just women who I. And men who I just think are so just just so stylish. They've just got something about them. They, they, For they instance, well, they throw on clothes and they just make them look great. I mean, Gila, Nash Taylor, John Taylor's wife is just. There isn't anybody I know who, if they when they meet her, it's the first thing they just love, fall in love with her style. And it really is. It really is her. It's who she completely is. completely innate. She just can't help it. Yeah, and I love that. She's an inspiration. And do you think your style has changed through the decades? I hope so. <laughs> I think I've just added more things. I? I mean, I've always thought I'm a, I'm a complete schizophrenic. You know, I, I would love sort of dressing up in different personas all the time. And I love that. You've got to have lots of that. I have to. I have to have all my mad boho moments. And I've got plenty of Farmer Giles moments and all sorts of, you know, they're roles that you play. Do you think age is a consideration of how you dress? It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. And I'm fighting against that. I'm fighting against it. I can see how it happens. When you're unsure of a look, whether it's hair, makeup, what you've put on, who do you most trust for an opinion? Ha, that's easy. So I have the most fabulous housekeeper on the planet. She is like family to me. And she just is one of these people she has style. It just oozes out of her. She gets it and she can put together outfits. She has a photographic memory for anything she's seen me wear. She remembers <laughs> always what the outfit was, who it was designed by, everything, how it was. And she's the person. She's honestly the person who I really, most of the time, I really hope if I'm going out, I manage to get the outfit on to show her before she leaves. Because, I love that. Yeah, because not Simon. Absolutely not. Does Simon have quite a firm opinion on what He'll, he likes or doesn't he, on you? He has a problem in that poor thing. You know, I've set up the fear in him that he's gone. Anything I used to say I liked, she'd then do the opposite. So what I'm going to do now is say the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, "That's totally all the wrong motivation there." So, so now, but you know, he started to get things too. You know, he'll be like. Oh, no, no, that's a bit too matchy-matchy. No, you know, he's picked up things. Bless him. He's tried to use the phrases. But no, but no, you know, she's she's the one I turn to, honestly. I hate to ask someone as chic as you, but do, do you have a worst fashion moment that you look back on and think, why did I wear that? Uh, I think these trousers I'm wearing today are probably one. I mean, I can remember wearing them to a show in London and... Um, 
I got a couple of disparaging remarks. <laughs> As a, and they should never really have seen the light of day again, but they have. Um, I had worst fashion moments, you know. I, luckily, I'm I'm really good at. I think I'm really good at not letting, not holding on to those memories. Really, yeah. I'm, I think we we all have them, don't we? I, I probably I'm, spent far too much time in long johns, but you know, I, lo <laughs> I loved that look. I loved it. Um, dirty old Rain Max again. I loved that look. Um, I'm trying to think. Do you know, there, there's probably a litany of them somewhere. But are you, in this day and age of social media and the press and all the rest of it, being quite brutal at times with, with all of us, uh, do you ever take that to heart? I really luckily don't look at anything. I, I really won't do Good it. Good answer. I won't, just won't do it. It's soul destroying. I can't stand looking at myself anyway. And it becomes a nasty obsession. And if you ever kind of Google or go down or look at comments, if you've done it once, you'll never do it again because it's it's just it's not a nice, happy place to be. So and, and you know, I'm old news, so nobody takes my picture anymore. It's great. Nobody cares. And I don't take my own picture either, really. I'm <laughs> hopeless. Let's talk about travel for a moment. Are you a good packer, bad packer? Ah. Uh, hmm. I think I mean, a, you've travelled a I lot. I think I know. Do you know what, Simon? I always laugh because he takes forever to pack, to go to go on the road or to go anywhere. And we always laugh, you know, like, how many years do you have to do this for, for crying out loud? I mean, you know. <laughs> uh, and you do have to really think. I, I, I like to, if I'm going away for two weeks, I know I've got to have a different outfit every day and every night. I know that. And then I can rotate. So that's how I sort of break things down on what I can get away with, what's more important. You know, is 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 evening more important, getting that right? or And daytime is just easy and fluid. So I think it's breaking down into to, to what you're going to do. And if it's just me for work, it's easy. I don't have to think about that. But something like touring is, is a little bit more difficult. It, it is, I would yeah, imagine. I, I, it takes me a long time. Packing is a nightmare, let's face it. And and you know you're going to be up all night doing it. So it doesn't matter if that's an early flight or a later flight. It makes no difference. You're still not going so to get enough sleep. So relieved to hear you say yeah, that. Yeah, it's, honestly, it's honestly ridiculous. Every time we do it, we cannot understand why we're not in bed before, you know, two or three oh, in the morning. I it's know. like, what? Why? Mm. <laughs> what is the most expensive item of clothing that you've bought? A dusty pink Gucci suit. The I've one, seen you in you've it. You've seen me in it, the one with the marabou feather oh, gorgeous. sleeve, uh, which, you know, it stood me in good stead. Did you ever think of pounds per wear when you were putting your credit card down? Yes. <laughs> yes. But then, you know, there are, I've, I've had things like, I can remember going and buying from Celine these big, puffy, white slip-on trainers like the biggest they the, the most ugly thing on the planet yeah like they look like you know um chest fri you know freezers yeah i've got two chest freezers padded ones on my feet and i was so embarrassed at how much they cost because they were really really goppingly expensive and i that i would lie to people and they said oh where are you where are they from and i go oh office and i couldn't tell them <laughs> I couldn't tell them at all. Couldn't let my daughters know for a while until one of them saw inside that they were silly. And they were horrified. But, I mean, pounds per wear, forget it. The most value for money I've had from any single piece I've ever bought in my entire life. So that, because of those, I now think, huh, yeah, you know what? You can make it work. So, you know, that pink suit... It's getting wheeled out so much. People are like, oh, God, she's not wearing that jacket again. <laughs> but actually, that brings me on to a, a really pertinent point. What's your approach to sustainable fashion? I just think, you know what, we all make mistakes. We've all gone. We've all bought things we don't really love. Get rid of them. Sell them on. Give them to someone who's going to love them. And, and just, you know what, sleep on it. Think about something. If you wake up the next day and you're still thinking about it or you've been dreaming about it, then do it. But take your time. Take your time. And buy well. Honestly, buy, buy, buy as much. Buy the best quality that you can. Because at the end of the day, you know, and this doesn't, by the way, this doesn't always mean a luxury house. I've had luxury houses 
expensive piece, that the seam slippage was terrible. They should have known. Um, but really look and feel, because it's how you feel, and the fabric's really important. Do you find yourself looking in the label to find out where it was made? Are you very conscious of ethically sourced? I think, you know, in a world where people like to think a lot of things, I mean, when people used to think made in China and they go, well, that's not, well, as you and I both know, uh, some of the, well, the most highly talented craftspeople, I mean, you want to work with silk, those are the people who know how. They are masterful at it. And and they are paid, you know, they're paid well. They're having incredibly stressful jobs because, you know, those manufacturers are can be working 24 hours. They're, they're just, you know, because they are the people who know how to work with it. Well, all I can say is, you know, maybe wake up everybody. Maybe, maybe here we need to start manufacturing again, as we used to back in the day. Oh, hallelujah. So oh. I don't know what ethically means sometimes. You know, I think there's a lot of greenwashing that's going on, which annoys me because I think there's a degree of ignorance about how things really work and and that you know that chain that process is is it's more involved yeah you know it's not a black and white there needs to be just far greater transparency yes from from literally yeah source to yeah end absolutely I think everybody would everybody would want that yeah I I totally agree would you ever rent Hmm. Interesting thought. I think I batter my things a little bit too much, I'll be honest. I mean, I tend to, if I, you know, something's half good, I will have put it through the ringer. It's already. genuinely pre-loved. Genuinely <laughs> pre-loved. Yes, it, um, that's a nice term for it. Yeah, a lot of my stuff has seen a lot of action. Mm. Let's swing on some quick fire questions. Oh, Lord. What fashion advice would you give your 20-year-old self? Oh, gosh. I, I do you know what I, I do you know what I would say to my twenty year old self have more fun, and and I jokingly say um, I probably should have worn um, a lot more mini skirts, um, bodies, bikini maybe once in a while could have been good to make the most of it. That waist is not going to last forever. In fact, it barely lasted more than a couple of years after that. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, generally have more fun. Mm. Which fashion trend would you like to see make a comeback? I think we're really lucky. I think everything's out there, right? I mean, I've never really, I've always, you know, I've, I've always loved the 70s, just couldn't help myself, you know, want to be a disco dolly, but I, I think it's all out there. What fashion or beauty trend would you consign to Room 101? I like it all. I mean, beauty trends, what, what do you think? What do you think should be consigned? Oh, this is my interview of you. <laughs> <laughs> This could be a conversation. Well, it can be. Maybe you should come back and oh, I should, interview oh me. Oh, my God. How much would I love that? That would be fabulous. I, I will hold you to that. Mm-hmm. What was your last impulse buy? It was mm, slightly impulse, but it was that Saint Laurent jacket, that black Saint Laurent jacket. Yeah. Pretty good, yep. I would well, say. Well, you know what? My husband was being... Um, um, I'm having that menopausal woman moment when I've uh, inducted, inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. There you go. I found the word. It was on the conveyor belt right in front of me. <laughs> um, inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So that's a biggie. It's a very big deal in America. It's huge. And um, I, you know, I needed to have an outfit. And of course, typically me, left it till the last moment and needed to felt like I needed to cover up, but be a bit rock and roll, but a bit. So I bought that black Saint Laurent jacket and I... I'm so happy I bought that jacket. I will have it forever. I think you will too. Yeah. Views on tattoos? Views on tattoos. Mm. Well, um, yeah, I kind of, I love them on other people. Um, My issue is where you put them and what happens when you get old and wrinkly. And the bit that you thought was really clever then sags and does something else, highly inappropriate, um, because that can happen. Yeah. So I, you know, never say never. But, you know, we all thought we were going to stop modelling at 25. So I used to walk around going, well, you know, at 25, I'm going to shave my head, you know, pierce my nose and get a tattoo. And I've been waiting so a the long girl... time to do all that. And I've not done it now, have I? And I'm Wait, 58. And you're still modelling. Beauty treatment you couldn't give up. Beauty treatment. Well, you know what? The, 
the old waxing, there's not as much hair as I used to be, I'll be honest, that's the one upside of getting older. Um, so I thought, I thought I'd be doing that forever. Well, uh, obviously on the face, that's a different thing because I feel like I'm one of the, th one of the musketeers. I keep calling myself D'Artagnan. Um, I don't know, beauty treatments. I mean, you know what? I hold my hands up. I have a tiny amount of Botox, maybe twice a year, just, just to make sure I'm just ticking over, keeping things, you know, in check. And um, that's about it, I think. I mean, I, I, I need to do more. I've had this wonderful thing called Ula therapy. Had that a couple of times. That's kind of cool. It's, you know, it's not the most enjoyable thing, I have to say. And I'm thinking about having it done again and thinking about what I could possibly take beforehand to, to just take the edge off it. Mm. High end or high street? Oh, a bit of both. Bling or bear? Oh, yeah, definitely a bit of both there. Uh, Minimalism yeah. or maximalism? But, you know, it's all depending on the day, really. I happily do both. Yeah, they're both in my universe. Couture or charity shop? D well, definitely charity shop. Crocs, cute or puke? I adore Crocs. Absolutely adore. If I, if I had my way, and if they weren't so huge, because, you know, storing them's a problem, especially in our household with so many people, I'd have them in every colour. Uh, sneakers with, or stilettos? With socks as well, by the way. It's the Crocs with socks. You've got to get with it. Mm. Mm. Sneakers or stilettos? Well, I feel really sorry for my stilettos. Um, somebody needs to take them out on a walk some, <laughs> every now and then. I've got to say that the sneaker thing is really, it's taking over. I never thought this would happen to me. I put heels on for you today. Put heels on for you today. I'm... But I keep opening up the shoe closet and I keep, I keep saying sorry to them. Like... Can can I just say something? You're not the first woman that said that, and I love yeah. it. They're going to come out someday. Sports Lux or, or Rock Chick? Rock Chick. But Could I love a bit of Sports Lux. I mean, I love, give me a, I love a tracksuit, you know, with a bit of Rock Chick thrown in at the same time. Red carpet or relax? Oh, I, I think I, I tend, I, I can do both for both. You know, I, I've, I've got that, I've got those wires mixed up a few times. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like that works for me. Cashmere or cotton? Oh, I love cashmere. Hoarder or editor? Oh, I'm a hoarder. Charity shop or resale? Both. Shapewear or sexy lingerie? I have a problem with shapewear. It just makes me want to pee all the time. I've had some very yeah, embarrassing moments when I thought I was being clever. My daughter made me wear it. God damn it. She should have known better than I. I've got no pelvic floor. So, yeah, I'm not doing shapewear ever again. Sorry. Yeah. Tights or stockings? Oh, God. Who does stockings these days? Hold ups. Hold ups. Yeah, I have done that. I've been there. They are quite nice, actually. It's, uh, you know, it's um, very much healthier for you, of course, but, you know. Um, I haven't, and I haven't really worn tights in a long time, but I do like tights. I like really patterned tights and groovy tights. Bikini or one piece? Oh, it's a one piece now. I mean, I tend to be like a one piece or, or nothing. <laughs> Quite literally. Well, um, given a choice, I would, but you know, or the one piece rolled all the way down. That's, that's generally the, the thing. Trilby or Tracy? Goodness me. I mean, I'm not a hat person. Well, then, finally, one last question at the end of the day. What do you or don't you wear in bed? Anything and everything. I mean, to be, to be frank, what I really do wear in bed always is socks. <laughs> yeah. Naked with socks. Yeah. Yeah. Yazzie. What a delight. <laughs> this con conversation is to be continued, no doubt. <laughs> we could do part two. <laughs> Let's do part the X two. The X-rated version. <laughs> the stories I could tell you. <laughs> I have no doubt there are many of those. But thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. It's been a pleasure. What a delight. What a lovely way to spend an afternoon. Thank you. Love you. Love you too. <laughs>